This is the award-winning Ernest Angley Hour, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations. I believe in miracles because I believe in God. As you watch today's program, reach out in faith and allow the Lord to minister to your personal needs. You can have a miracle. And here is God's man for this hour, Reverend Ernest Angley. Greetings in the name of the Lord and welcome to the Ernest Angley Hour. I'm the Reverend Chris Mockhammer. I'm an associate pastor at Ernest Angley's Grace Cathedral. I'll be your guest host for the program today. You will enjoy good music and singing a powerful sermon by the Reverend Ernest Angley. Also, Kathy Millar will be on set sharing some great testimonies of how God is saving, healing, delivering people through this Jesus ministry in different countries around the world. However, to start this program, we have for you the Jubilee Youth Choir with the song, Our Lord, We Worship You.
the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now get ready to take down the scriptures. And I got a lot of them to give you tonight. My sheep know my voice is the subject tonight. My sheep know my voice. John 10th chapter, verses 4 and 27. And when he, the shepherd of the sheep, putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Now keep this in mind, for they know his voice. This is the Bible. My sheep know my voice. This is Jesus' talk. And I know them, and they follow me. And that's the reason we're following the Lord. We know his voice. We know his voice. We do know his voice. There's a lot said in these two opening scriptures. They re reveal so much about who God true sheep are. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd. They know Jesus. The shepherd knows his sheep voice. It's wonderful to be one of the Lord's sheep to know his voice and to follow only him. Jesus said, I know them. He knows the shepherd knows his sheep. That means he knows if we are truly his, his sheep are not going to listen to the voice of strangers. Neither will they follow anyone else but him. There are many voices in the land today and they're all crying out to the herd. Some are crying, come this way. Others are crying, this is the right way. But God's true sheep know the voice of the good shepherd and they are acquainted with him, familiar with his word and voice. And they will not listen to the voice of of a stranger. Who is a stranger? Now think about who's a stranger. An outsider, number one. Someone you're not acquainted with or familiar with. Someone who does not belong in the environment in which they are found. And you know most People, surely, if there's like my mother, mother knew her sheep. She knew it was me or my brother, no matter how late we came in. She woke up to the fact and listened to the, and she could tell you exactly who it was, what time they came in, or we came in. <laughs> Many think they are the sheep of God's pasture, but they aren't. They don't know the voice. They aren't hearing him. And they aren't following him. They think th their church, their religion, or their heritage makes them one of God's sheep. But it doesn't. Not at all. Not at all. John 10th chapter, verse 25 and 26. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not the works that I do in my Father's name. They bear witness of me. And you believe, you believe not because you're not of my sheep. That was telling them. In John 10, 31, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Now you think about it. They thought because they were Abraham's seed that they were God's sheep, but they weren't. They did not know God's voice. If they did, they would have followed Jesus, but instead they wanted to kill him. John, the eighth chapter, verse 37, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because... My word hath no place in you. John, the eighth chapter, verses 
39 through 47. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to them, we be not born to fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. I didn't come of myself. Why do you not understand my speech? And because you cannot hear my word. You are your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. Claiming position in religious bodies does not make you one of God's truths sheep to claim to be something you aren't is worse than never claiming it at all God hates a hypocrite it was the religious hypocrites of Jesus day that fought him the most they did not know his voice they did not follow him and Jesus did not know them as his own do you know the voice of the good shepherd do you listen only to his voice? I hope and trust you do. I know I do. And I know most of you here tonight do. And do you follow only him? If so, you're his sheep. You know it and God knows it. Psalms 1 verse 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. His sheep are righteous and he knoweth their way. Job, 23rd chapter, verses 10 and 11. But he knoweth the way that I take, and when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps, his way have I kept and not declined. My foot hath held his steps, his way have I kept and not declined. That's wonderful. That's great. Nahum. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Yes, he does. He knows he is sheep. And after you listen to all this message of scriptures about how he knows his sheep, and his sheep know his voice, It'll make a difference in your life. Do you profess to be born again Christian, yet you walk in parts of sin? If so, you're not his sheep. God's sheep follow the shepherd, and the good shepherd does not lead you in the paths of sin, but of righteousness. Psalms 23rd, Psalm verse 3, He leadeth me in the paths of of righteousness for his name's sake. He leadeth me. Say it, everybody. Amen. Say it another time, but louder. Amen. Say it real loud this time. Amen. That's more like it. Proverbs 4th chapter, verse 11. I have led thee in right paths. That's wonderful. Even before Jesus came. 
God was saying, I have led thee in right paths. Proverbs again, 8th chapter, 20th verse. I lead in the way of righteousness. I lead in the way of righteousness. That's the only way God the Father leads. That's the only way that Jesus leads. Only way the Holy Ghost leads. Only way the Godhead leads. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Many today will not accept the fact that they are not one of God's true sheep. And when they should be thankful to the messenger that reveals the truth to them, they cast their stones instead. And that's true. A lot of people cast stones at you when you tell them the truth. A true sh shepherd's desire is to be led. A true sheep desire is to be led by the good shepherd in the paths of righteousness. Psalms 51, 8th verse. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness. Make thy way straight before my face. Lead me, O Lord. And he's leading us. Is he leading you? He's leading me. He's leading you too, isn't he? Psalm, yeah. Give him a hand. <laughs> Psalms, 25th Psalm, 5th verse, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. I wait for thee. I wait for thee. I wait for thee. Do you wait upon the Lord? I do all, all of these things. Psalms 31, verse 3, For thou art my rock and my fortress, therefore for thy name's sake. For thy name say, lead me and guide me. Psalms 43 and verse 3. O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto the holy hill and to thy tabernacles. That's good Bible direction. Psalms 143 verse 10 Teach me to do thy will. See we have to learn to do the will of God. I knew so much about the will of God because it was lived in my presence. I grew up in it. But teach me to do thy will for thou art my God Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Lead me in the land of uprightness. And that's wonderful. Why would anyone want to listen? Why would they want to listen? Tell me why. They want to listen to the voice of a stranger when the good shepherd gave his life for them. Why would they want to follow someone who doesn't care for their soul, who steals, kills, and destroys them. John 10th chapter 10th verse through the 15th, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He came to bring us abundant life, joy like we never had before, peace like we never had before, grace, that's all the favor of God, like we never had before. Luke 24th chapter, verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power 
from on high, the Holy Ghost power. That's the greatest power in all the world. The greatest power. Don't ever forget that. The power of the Holy Ghost. Say it. Say it again. Another real loud one. There's no greater power. And just think, he trusts us with it. Some people try to talk for him, mimic him. That's an abomination. That's a dangerous thing to be doing. Acts, second chapter, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave the utterance. The takeover of the Spirit as something be so controlled, so full of God's power that he can take your tongue and use it as his very own. Take care of your tongue. Nobody's ever been able to, no human being, being has ever been able to use your tongue, tongue but you. But the Holy Ghost, you give over to him. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. He chose men who really knew his voice, obeyed his voice, and followed him in all obedience. Jesus did not choose strangers, those who were unfamiliar with him, who did not know his voice and who did not follow him command command to be endued with power from on high. He did not want shepherds who were full of themselves, who did their own thing and cared not for the sheep. You people are greatly loved here by your th three preachers. And most of you, if not all of you, you realize that. Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, verse 8. My flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd. Now, why did that happen? Because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves. And fed not my flock, because the disciples obeyed the voice of the great shepherd and went to the upper room. The Lord gave them great charge. He entrusted them for the task of being a little shepherd. And he put his honor upon them and sent them in all the world together feed and watch God's sheep sheep that truly knew the voice of the good shepherd and follow him sheep that will one day dwell in the house of the Lord forever the real estate for the sheep is in glory a mansion already built on him and we're going to it pretty soon now we don't have to worry about real estate down here no our real estate up there is so rich no weeds no thistles no insects no my sheep know my voice my sheep know my voice and we do know his voice. We know when he's talking. We recognize that voice and we stay in step. And when the Lord took me up in the rapture, he didn't even mention it to me ahead of time. I knew about the one flight out. I got up that morning, he didn't mention it. I was about to be caught away. I never dreamed it would happen to me. 
and I was changed. And the Lord told me one time that it was not death. Some preachers were preaching it. He told me that it is not death. Death will reach out for a child of God and they'll be gone. Death won't be fast enough. And that's the way it was. I was changed into my new body that could fly without wings. And I found myself way, way up. I don't know how many miles. And there was millions of millions of people before me, behind me, to my left and to my right. It was something. And everybody was shouting one word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's no trans, no other word for hallelujah. Not in any language. It's the same in every language. The same. Jesus is our hallelujah. He's our hallelujah. I love that hallelujah chorus. I'm sure you do. That's a real song. I'm glad that our choir can sing it in such a wonderful way. It's great the way they sing it. People love to hear them sing the hallelujah chorus. Believe you me, really and truly. We know the voice of him. He knows us to be true sheep, real sheep, real sheep. And we're not drawn away with any faults. The devil can't bother us. He can't even touch us. Some of you, you let him touch your mind, and you shouldn't. He's got no business. You belong to the God of heaven. You belong to Jesus. And you shouldn't give over. I don't give over to idle talk. Idle talk is the devil's language. The Lord gave us a love language, the language that everybody speaks in heaven, the love language, the love language, the love language. And we're speaking that, speaking that. You that have listened to me by radio or by TV, if you're not one of his sheep, become one now. And help me, you in this great audience tonight, help me to say the sinner's prayer with the people. Oh God, oh God. I have sinned against you. I have shamed your holy name. I am so sorry, but I've come out of the dark. I've come to the light. You said if I'd confess my sins with godly sorrow, you would forgive me and you would cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I do cry about how I've put you to shame, the one who died for me. And I believe for you to wash away all of my sins, all of my sins. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in. And if you believe that, you're now a sheep of his pasture. You are led by the Holy Ghost. And you need to go on and get the Holy Ghost. And you just praise him. The word is glory. Just glory, glory, glory until the Holy Ghost takes over. That is one praise of the Lord, glory. And he comes in on a praise. Don't forget that. He comes in on a praise. And you can have the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray. For, you can have a miracle now. Healing through the blood. Healing through the name Jesus. Lord, I come against that sickness, that death. Heal, heal, heal in the name of Jesus. The healing power is flowing.
through the radio, through the TV set, flowing to you. He went to the whipping post. They almost beat him to death, but he paid the price for our miracles, for our healings. He did, he did. He hates sickness, he hates diseases, hates afflictions, and will soon be in heaven where there are none. Not one pain will ever be felt. That's wonderful, isn't it? Really wonderful. Well, friend, I hope you were blessed by that sermon today by the Reverend Ernest Angeli. At this time, I want to encourage you, partners of this ministry, read the letter Reverend Angeli sent to you this month, the theme of the letter, Divinity Christmas. He received wonderful thoughts from the Lord for you in this letter. Read it, you will be blessed. And in this Christmas season, I encourage you to send in that special Christmas offering. God so loved the world, he gave us Jesus. And now it's our love obligation in return to the Lord to share this gift with others. And we're doing so all over the world, sharing the gift by way of the printed page, television, world radio, the internet, and so forth. And we're continuing to win the lost at any cost. Do help us. Our mailing address is Ernest Angley Ministries, P.O. Box 1790, Akron, Ohio, 44309. In Canada, it's Ernest Angley Ministries, Box 970, Station U, Toronto, Ontario, M8Z5P9. And remember, friend, every month that you sponsor this Jesus ministry, you will get a new giant little book of the month. Now, these are sermons by the Reverend Ernest Angley in booklet form. And the December giant little book is entitled, Led by the Spirit. Oh, this message will really bless you in your walk with the Lord. So when you send in your support for the month of December, request gift offer P350. And friend, do you enjoy our good Christmas music and singing? Well, I want to encourage you to tune in to our YouTube channel, the Ernest Angley Ministries YouTube channel, and you will enjoy wonderful Christmas music and singing anytime you like, as well as good sermons on Christmas. You can also go to our Facebook page at Ernest Angley Ministries. You will be greatly blessed. And speaking of a blessing, we have a great Christmas song for you right now by the Hallelujahs. Listen and be blessed. Savior would be born who could take our sins away. He's a promised Messiah, the morning star, Prince of Peace. He's the Son of God, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ our King. Jesus joy, came. joy, joy, great joy when Jesus came. Jesus came. Joy, joy, great joy. joy. swaddling clothes. Jesus, God's Son, was born of the Holy Ghost. Shepherds came and worshipped Him, wise men saw His star. Angels praised His holy name, glory to God on high. Jesus, joy, 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 great joy when Jesus came. Jesus came.
peace and joy of that holy night Lives down deep in this heart of mine I ask Jesus to come in He freed me from all sin The love Jesus brought at Christmas time Will always be mine you enjoy our good Christmas music and singing. And now I have a special guest with me on set. It's Kathy Millar with testimonies from around the world. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you for having me here today. And I see you have a lot of letters there to share. Yes, I do, I do. And I have a letter here from a man writing from Kenya, and he's been blessed in a great way, and so has his family through the use of the blessed cloth. And he writes, Dear Reverend Angley, first of all, received much greetings from me and my entire family. In my life, God has been destroying the works of darkness right before me, and I thank him dearly. He has been so good to me and is making ways for me where there seems to be no way. And of course, that's just like our Lord. He does that for us. That's right. He has healed me from depression and acne, and he has all the time been my healer because of this ministry. So he recognizes that through this ministry, he's been introduced to miracles and healings, which is wonderful. Through the blessed cloth, my sister was healed from demonic attacks, my mom from mental confusion, and my dad from a fatal motorbike crash. So God has really moved for a lot of members of, from his family. Oh, sounds yes. like it. People are getting healed from all manner, manner of sicknesses through the blessed cloth, and hence they are being drawn nearer to God. And of course, miracles do that. They draw people close to God. Your ministry is different from most other preachers. You resemble Jesus Christ. And the letter that you wrote to me was a message from above. Let me take this opportunity to thank you for sending the two wonderful Power of the Holy Ghost magazines. They have blessed me a lot. I have distributed them and whoever receives them is no longer the same. I love this ministry. I pray for you and each minister working with you. I watch you on the TV program together with my family. My parents are highly blessed and whenever I watch you, I feel the presence of God near me. My dearest spiritual father, may God bless you. Because of you, I am serving God. Here in Kenya, we love you and pray for you. May the living God bless you mightily, your son in Christ Jesus. Well, it's good to hear that these people were blessing with the literature. They're able to use it and help other people. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> and for his family members to receive those miracles in such a wonderful way, and his father and that motor uh, cycle accident, mm -hmm. you know, he yep. probably could have been killed. Oh, no doubt. But praise God, the blessed cloth and the anointing that's in the cloth can heal. Change the whole family. Absolutely. Well, here's a letter from a man writing from Zambia, Central Africa, and he writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord. Our God is mighty indeed. He is the God of miracles. Everyone who puts their <clears throat> trust in him will not be disappointed. I am writing to vividly thank God for the miracles I've seen and experienced through the blessed cloth you sent to me. God really has the power to heal no matter the situation. I am testifying of what our precious Lord did for my friend who was critically ill. It is wonderful to note that God has his own way of giving and performing wonders on his own given time. I had requested the blessed cloth before my friend fell sick. On the day I went to the post office to check my mail, I was very grateful that I was sent the blessed cloth that I had requested. 
for that same day is the day my friend's condition worsened. Thank God I never hesitated and I immediately went to pray for my friend. Oh, how wonderful it was. He was healed immediately. Wow, that's great. So I just keep thinking about that. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes to the mailbox, he receives the blessed cloth, his friend is ill, he immediately goes and prays for him mm -hmm. and he gets his healing. So God's timing is perfect. He's in control. <laughs> He's in control. He says, God is a miracle working God. There is no case too hard and no power too strong for him. My friend is fully recovered and is working again. People were really amazed, but I told them that God can do wonders to those that believe in him. And that's the key. They must believe. That's right. Nothing doubting. They were so inquisitive to know more about the blessed cloth. I am praying for you, your family, and the whole entire Ernest Angeli Ministries for the wonderful work you are doing. May he bless you abundantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, miracles make witnesses. Absolutely. Well, here's a pastor writing from Malawi, Central Africa. And this <clears throat> pastor writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, I thank God for your life in the name of Jesus. I received your book entitled The Mind of Christ and other materials that I have distributed to the members of my church. I organized a revival week of prayer, which I called Miracle Week, from Monday to Saturday. And the theme for the week was the mind of Christ. Using your book that you sent to me. So that was the whole theme of that revival week based on Reverend's book. Mm -hmm. The miracles that took place are as follows. One woman had a kidney problem whereby she was to be operated on that same week, but the problem disappeared and she is now free. Another lady had high blood pressure and she is now free. Two men were completely addicted to alcohol, but they are now free. Since you started sending me your books and magazines, I have been preaching strongly to win souls for Christ. We are in a remote area and the population is small. Many people believe in witchcraft. But now it has been found that people are repenting and leaving their dead churches to come to my church to seek for the Holy Ghost baptism. So now he's teaching his congregation about the Holy Ghost baptism, which is wonderful. Well, the power of God working in his services, that's what's drawing the people. Mm -hmm. And they need the Holy Ghost. They do. Within a week's time, my church has grown from, grown from 59 members to 77 members. Isn't that fantastic? And no doubt it will continue to grow. Oh, absolutely. And with it being in such a remote area, that's amazing how much it's grown. Yes. That's the power of God. There are many more testimonies of what God has done for others because of your prayers and materials. My spiritual life has been so lifted, and sometimes I take the whole day with my door closed to pray and read your books. It's my prayer that God should grant you a long life so you can continue to mentor us under the direction of the Holy Spirit. God bless. Oh, that's a powerful testimony. Yes. And friends, speaking of the book, The Mind of Christ, I want to offer you this book right now. What a blessing it was to that pastor and his members. And this book can be a blessing to you. The Bible plainly tells us to take on the mind of Christ. And children of God, that's your duty. That's your privilege to have this mind. Learn how to take on the mind of Christ through this book. I want you to watch this special video to learn how. Philippians says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This scripture proves that we can have the exact same mind that Christ had. And Reverend Angeli's profound book, The Mind of Christ, tells you exactly what made up that magnificent mind. He spent many hours with God in His Word, and the Lord revealed to him 141 ingredients that made up Christ's mind. Each one can be found in the Scriptures, and they are all listed in this book. Carefully study them, knowing that you can add each one to your mind. Then, take the exam at the end of the book. When you can think and act like Jesus, you will truly be free. Friend, I encourage you, get this book. 
All you need to do is go to ernestangeley.org to see more details how to get this book and the donation amount. Remember, it's available as a book and as an ebook. So just go to ernestangeley.org. And now it's back to Kathy with more testimonies. Okay, Kathy. Well, I love this testimony. It's short, but I just love it. Here's a man writing from Ghana, West Africa, and he says, Dear Reverend Angeli, I am glad to write you this letter. I hope by the Lord's grace you are fine in life. Thank you for praying for me and my family when you were in our country. My uncle was healed and my brother was healed of blindness. Praise God. So isn't that a wonderful miracle? It is. For him to go to that crusade blind and then to receive his sight. It's amazing how God just moves in such a wonderful way, way through those crusades. Oh, yes. So many reports we never hear of until yes. maybe months or years later. Right, exactly. So, but we love to hear them either way. Oh, we do. Miracles last. <laughs> well, here is a letter from a woman writing from Zambia, Africa. And she writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, I greet all the people of Ernest Angeli Ministries in the name of Jesus Christ. I wrote to you that I had an STD. You sent me a blessed cloth and I am now healed. I really thank God for this miracle. I am so happy that God healed me. My dad was suffering from high blood pressure. When he received the blessed cloth, he too was healed by the power of the Lord. I really thank God for you and the wonderful works that the Lord works through you that healed me and my dad. God bless you, your sister in Christ. And the blessed cloth is a powerful tool God yeah. is using. And it's amazing how it's changing families. Yes. And how wonderful that that family can share those blessings together. Oh, yes, no doubt. Well, here's a woman writing from Zimbabwe. And she writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, I thank our dear Lord Jesus Christ for using you the way he does for his ministry. Thank you once more for the blessed cloths and the Power of the Holy Ghost magazine. I really was richly blessed by reading it. I also thank God for the miracles he has already shown in the life of my husband. He was diabetic, but right now the condition is normal. After using the blessed cloth, he went for a test in March and they found no sugar at all. Now that's a miracle. <laughs> that is a miracle. There's no cure for that right. through medical science, but God has the cure. Yes, and so many people write in saying that they've been delivered from diabetes. It's just fantastic. A simple thing for God. It is very simple. And sometimes we limit God and God doesn't want us to do that. No, we can't afford to tie his hands. Right. And this woman ends her letter by saying, may our, God, may our God richly bless you, yours faithfully. Well, I think I have time for one more here. This man uh, is from Zambia, Africa, and he's received some financial blessings through this ministry. And he writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, thank you very much for the blessed cloth and the power of the Holy Ghost magazines you sent to me. The Lord is so kind and merciful to all, and he has answered my prayer. I wrote you a letter a while back asking for prayer about my job situation. I have been working for different companies under poor circumstances and on a temporary basis. Every three to four months, the jobs would be terminated, and I was out of work and unable to make ends meet. No one could help me, not even my closest friends, I felt I was all alone in this world. Sometimes I would just sit down and cry over the situation. But now the Lord has done it. I was called out for an interview by one of the biggest mining companies in Zambia to train as a machine operator. And I was successful. That's great. Now I am a permanent full-time employee for the mine and have been offered a very attractive salary. <laughs> Reverend, I am so happy and thankful for what God has done. Sometimes it seems just like a dream. Glory be to God. I also thank you very much for your help and prayers. May God richly bless you and your ministry. 
yours faithfully. Well, it pays to serve the Lord. Absolutely. He promised to bless spiritually, physically, and financially. Yes, amen. <laughs> well, thanks, Kathy, for being on the program. And now, friend, we have for you some more good gospel music and singing. Listen. If you enjoy Christmas music and singing and the beautiful Christmas carols, I'd like to invite you to be with us during this Christmas season at Ernest Angeles Grace Cathedral, and you'll enjoy the cathedral. It's decorated in such a beautiful way, and you'll enjoy that good Christmas music and singing. If you have the opportunity, be with us over the Christmas holidays. We have special services throughout and it starts with the December 23rd Christmas Sing at 7 p.m. Ernest Angeles Grace Cathedral in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, USA, 2700 State Road. It's a big Christmas music and singing time. No preaching in this service, and all seats are free. Then, Friday night, December 28th, 7 p.m., Again, at Ernest Angeles Grace Cathedral in Cuyahoga Falls, it's the Christmas and New Year's Holy Communion and Miracle Service. This is one of the most special times of the entire year. This service is a combination of two services in one. The power of God works in a very special way in this service. People, when they discern the Lord's body in taking Holy Communion, they receive many times miracles and healings that they couldn't receive at any other time. People will be traveling from other states, even other nations, 
to be in that great service. Then, Sunday, December 30th, 7 p.m., once again, at Ernest Angeles Grace Cathedral in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, it's the big New Year sing. Again, no preaching in this service, a variety of groups performing, wonderful Christmas songs as well as gospel songs. And again, all seats are free. So for more information, I encourage you to go to ernestangeley.org. And while you're on our website, do read the latest edition of the Power of the Holy Ghost magazine. And the title of this edition is Walking in the Midst of the Fire. This is a very powerful sermon by the Reverend Ernest Angeli that will help you in your walk with the Lord. And while you're reading that edition, you'll also read some great testimonies of how God has healed and blessed people through this Jesus ministry. Read it for free, ernestangeli.org. And be sure, friend, to tune in next week. We will have more good Christmas music on the program. Plus, throughout the week, if you would like to enjoy more Christmas songs and carols from this Jesus ministry, as well as witnessing miracles, hearing testimonies, sermons, I invite you, go to ernestangeley.org. You can also go to our Facebook page at Ernest Angeley Ministries and go to our YouTube channel, Ernest Angeley Ministries. Any time of the day or night, you will be greatly blessed. And friend, if you've been blessed through this Jesus ministry, if you enjoy the programming, if you've received a miracle or a healing, we'd love to hear about it. Send us an email of your testimony. You can send it to testimonies at ernestangeley.org. Or you can send in your testimony by mail, Ernest Angeley Ministries, P.O. Box 1790, Akron, Ohio, 44309. God bless. Are you enjoying the anointed music, singing, and preaching on this program? I want to let you know it is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on Ernest Angley World Radio. Go to our website to listen or download one of our apps. It doesn't matter where you are. As long as you have an internet connection, you can listen. Ernest Angley World Radio, a voice to the world. This program is paid for by the Ernest Angley Outreach Partners. Thank you for watching Ernest Angley Ministries YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the Ernest Angley Hour, hit the thumbs up button. And please help us take the message of Jesus to the world by clicking the link below to donate. Thanks again for watching, and if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to subscribe.